If you're interested in learning about cybersecurity, IT, security compliance, risk management framework, how to advertise yourself in IT and cybersecurity, check us out on ConvoCourses.com. We've got free courses. It's free to sign up, and I'm always releasing new stuff on there. All right, let's go. Let's go to the next control. And I'm going to go through a few controls here for you guys. Let's go to AC4. And this is information flow enforcement. We're going to talk very briefly about this one. We won't spend a lot of time on it. But it is important, just so you know. What is AC4? Information flow enforcement. Is the organization controlling the flow of data and is it documented? As an information system security officer, those are the main questions for AC4. So let's go ahead and let me show you what we're talking about here. We're going to go to AC4 and I'm still on nvd.nist.gov. And I just went to, if you're joining me late, you can follow along if you want. But I'm on nvd.nist.gov 800-53. Here we are. We're going to interpret it. And then I'm going to show you how it's implemented, how some of the things that you can do to actually check on it. So AC controls, let's see, let's just kind of go right to the description here. Here we are and it says the information system, we already described what the information system is, enforces approved authorizations for controlling the flow of information within the system and between interconnected systems based on what the organization says. The NIST doesn't tell you, tell the organization what those control policies, what elements should be controlled. They allow the organization to control. And that's why they say interconnection systems based on organization defined flow, information flow policy. So the organization defines what the information flow is. And then you're, the organization has to enforce those policies that they put forth. So one of the main things that I have seen done to document information flow enforcement is a diagram. So a diagram that kind of maybe like looks like this. It has firewalls. Let's kind of go through this. This is on the NIST. This is on um, Cisco.com, by the way. Network diagram. It has a DMZ. It has three servers in the DMZ, right? And we can see our DMZ is connected to a switch. The switch is connecting two different networks. Those networks are protected by these two different firewalls. Here's one LAN but that's behind a firewall. And it has some VPNs that are connected to the internet, right? So this one has more exposure than these ones over here. This is the inside of our organization. So this one's behind an internal firewall. So this is an external firewall and this is an internal firewall. And so this right here is showing what kind of flow enforcement we have. So we're just saying that our data just doesn't go out everywhere. It's controlled. We have a inner protected sanctum here with LAN computers with all of our protected data on it. And then we have outside systems. We have a protection from the internet. So this is actually the internet. Maybe we have VPN clients that log in or guest accounts that can log in to certain limited resources that we have out there. But what we're saying with flow control is that we're, our data is not going anywhere. Now, I've seen this done and documented different ways. Another way that I've documented in the past, or I've seen other organizations document it, is to just have a list of all of the land. If you have a um, land in building five, a land in building seven, and a land in building 10, you would just list out, here's the lands, and here's what they connect to. You could have like in a spreadsheet and explain what's going on with those things. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and um, move on from this one. 